Praise him. Hallelujah. What's going on, everybody? It's Brother Daryl Mack, and we're on the attack for the kingdom of heaven. It's diddly diddly D, and I'm about to bring the good word to thee. Hallelujah. All right, guys, we're going to be uh, bringing out of the upper room today. Uh, I say we, it's the Holy Spirit. I invite him in here. Hallelujah to have his way. Woo, lights, camera. Boom, Jesus. <laughs> Holy Spirit having his way this morning, guys. Uh, how about you? If you're in a rut, you can't get going. Call that Holy Spirit in, man. God's very presence, man. You know, a great, um, really quick um, uh, example. We watched the movie of Samson, you know, and Delilah, whatever, the other day. Well, Samson would get his, you know, head pounded in, boom, 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 by the enemy when he didn't call on the Lord. When he called on the Lord, he got strength, like unbelievable strength, right? He slayed the whole uh, Philistine army, right? With a jawbone of an uh, ass, right? God's got a sense of humor, right? <laughs> so with God, all things are truly possible. And, and he's taken someone like me, broken, depressed, drug addicted, women addicted, and healed me of all these things, right? So people, and a lie from hell came against me, his book of Joseph uh, as well. Joseph had a lie from hell come against him as well in the Old Testament there, chapter 39 of Genesis. And as people look at me, they go, who does this guy think he is? Some people believe the lie from hell, some people don't. But they still look at me as... You know, Daryl from back in the day in Baltimore City, big mouth, uh, joker, really evil, wicked tongue. You know, I used to say some mean jokes, mama jokes, this joke, jet joke. I had jokes. Demons were upon me, man. And, you know, um, people look at me and go, man, he, you know, he didn't do very good in school. And now he's on here preaching the word of God. And, and you know, kind of who does he think he is? Well, I'm, a, I'm, I'm just a broken person that God has fixed. And now he uses me. Through his power, he fixes me. And takes all those weaknesses away and gives me strength to push on, to have courage enough to sit in front of this camera, to sit here and read words that sometimes I can't actually pronounce or understand. And, um, you know, and I, I'm just fourth grade reading level and the Lord comes in and, and ups my level of reading with the Holy Spirit power, guys, you know. And, um, you know, you know, I... I uh, volunteer mostly these days um, and do the Lord's work. As I do the Lord's work, people look at me and go, why don't you have a regular job while well, I'm doing the Lord's work? And um, this is what he wants me to do. So they kind of look at me um, like it says here, um, David's job was a shepherd boy. And as he went in front of the giant and as I, Daryl, you know, the, the, the um, you know, the follower of Jesus Christ, the servant of the Lord, a humble servant, very humble um, doing the Lord's work. He died for me. I'm living the best for him. People look at me with not much prestige, right? Admiring me or any of this stuff or whatever. But, you know, I don't want that anyway. But they look at me and go, who is this guy? You know what I mean? I remember who he used to be and this lie from hell. Could this be true? Could it not be true? All the stuff involved, they just look at me and there's like, like it said, you know, no prestige for me. Um, admire me or this or that, you know. Um, and David was a little shepherd boy who went against the most vicious and most devastating, uh, let's say, demon-possessed bully giant in the land. He was undefeated. And God used him to defeat um, Goliath that day, as we're about to read. And God uses me to defeat demons in other people's lives because he works through me and I give the message to people, whether they want to hear it or not. When they're living a lie, they don't want to hear the truth. I didn't, I know they don't, but it's what, I am, what I'm made for, man. When my daughter was ripped out of my life from a lie from hell, God was preparing me for when I speak the truth, people were gonna walk out of my life for no reason. This, you know, it, it's like amazing the hurt that I felt and still feel today, but God covers that pain so I can push on. I focus on him and not the lie from hell because I don't defend the lie from hell. I defend the truth of God, but people walk out of my life left and right, left and right. God was priming me through what I went through and he primed jo uh, Joseph in the Old Testament, went through the same thing to prepare him, you know, um, for what he needed, you know, uh, the the perfect, perfect, per, a little, little, that's all folks, perfect purpose and plan that he had fulfilled for, for his, written out for Joseph's life to be fulfilled, and same with me, so God has primed me and just made me, um, just, you know, amazing um, instrument and tool, I can't even tell you guys, uh, you know, I'm going to cry, but I get so many messages in a day from people all around the world, not just my next door neighbors, and the Holy Spirit is flying through me right now, I'm humbled to God uses me. I don't need to be a certain level in this life and certain prestige to hey, look at me and look at my status and this and that. God took somebody like me. He took somebody like David that we're about to read and uses us. 
to defeat the demons, whether physically, spiritually, what demon-possessed man, you know, as Goliath was, God slayed him with the little shepherd boy. Um, God takes the uh, unqualified and he qualifies us. He qualified David that day. He qualifies me today because he's working through me, guys. And I tell you, man, it's an amazing... Um, um, it's just amazing. Uh, no prestige needed is the title today. We don't need that. He takes us broken and he fixes us. We don't need to be up here. He uses us when we're down here. That's what God does. And he lifts us up on high because of his Holy Spirit and power flowing through us, guys. Praise the Lord. I'm going to have to slide something down there. I can't see the time. Someone left me a message. But God has been using me, guys. It's just incredible. And I'm sharing this humbly. Like, wow. Like, God just lives me messages to share these words of wisdom and truth. Some people embrace them and say, Daryl, thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you for being a messenger of God. And thank you for picking your cross up and, and doing the work of the Lord to be a mouthpiece, a hand, hands, mouthpiece, and uh, hands, hands, feet, and mouthpiece of the Lord. It's an honor and a privilege, man. Like, I've never had a better job in my life. I work at the Kingdom of Heaven Incorporated. Best job ever. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm just keeping it real with you, man. And so, you know, no matter what you think of yourself and whatever job you got or you can't read right or you can't do this right, whatever, you're good at something. God has blessed you with a talent and a skill, not because you've been practicing, because it was meant to be that way and we we're, we're need to choose to serve the Lord. But And just back to this, though, only God can measure my worth. If I worry about what man thinks of me, then I'll never be nothing because... They don't think nothing of themselves. How are they going to think good of me? But God thinks the very best of me. And now I think the very best of myself. He gives me that confidence. He gives me joy. He gives me strength and courage to get up, move on. If I mess up and stumble and fall, we get up, we dust ourselves off, we pick that cross back up, and we're pushing on. And we're following Jesus. Guys, and, and tremendous, tremendous, tremendous faith on David's part. And David is a man after God's own heart. And I'm trying to be that. How about you? Um, I want to let God know everything. You know, um, David taught me to keep it real with God. When a lie from hell came against me, I let God hear everything I had in my heart. I called God every name in the book, pretty much. And uh, <laughs> and people are like, wow, really? Yes. God wants to hear you be real with him, not fake, phony in front. If you hate him, tell him. Say, I hate you, man. Why'd you let that happen? And ask him why. He's going to give you a precise answer that you cannot deny. And you can never ask a question to God again, man. Once you ask God a question, <laughs> God, Father God is so good, he will give you that one perfect answer where you can never ask the question again. And you got to deal with it. Whether it's something you want to hear or don't want to hear, it's going to be for your good. But sometimes we don't like hearing the truth when we're living a lie or it's going to be tough and you know, it's just something we got to do, man. Joseph had to do it in the Old Testament. I had to do it. You got to do it. Jesus had to do it. He left a perfect example for all men to follow. And if God got Jesus through what he went through, he will get you what, what, you, what, what you're going through today. Not even going to come close to Jesus. Or maybe you're standing in front of a giant guy, you know, today, right? <clears throat> and he wants to kill you. God will give you the strength, guys, in that very moment to defeat any giant in your path physically or spiritually i believe that with all my heart and soul and i'm just trying to be a man after god's own heart hate evil hate wickedness not the sinner but the sin um and try to help the sinners i don't agree with sinners you know um what they do of course we don't because god hates it we should hate it <clears throat> if they're enemies of god they should be our enemies but we pray for our enemies we we love our neighbors. Praise the Lord. All right, guys, we're going to get into this right now. <clears throat> no prestige necessary. God loves you just the way you are, and um, he thinks the best of you, man, and that's the best part about this walk. doesn't matter what anybody thinks respectfully saying. God knows the truth about my life and your life. When people are womp, 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 Charlie Brown and teacher in it, you know, and gossiping the naysayers, acting like they know the truth when they don't even know the truth about their own life, but yet they know about my life or your life. Um, we don't have to worry about nobody and what we say or do. And who you are today is perfect. God can use you just as you are. Come as you are. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to get this other message out of here. But, um, guys, we're going to roll on now. David and Goliath right there. But I'm going to read one scripture. It's not even a part of this. Um, it's uh, second, 1 Samuel 17, 41 through 50. But the Holy Spirit pushed me back to 16, 1 Samuel 16. And... Um, uh, verse 7, and it goes like this, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see a man as a man sees, for a man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at his heart, right? 
So God's not looking at, you know, a big macho strong man that, you know, that they thought they needed to go against Goliath. He said, I'm looking at the heart, not the muscles. I don't have any. <laughs> um, he's not looking at the muscles, the, the statue, you know, the outside, outside appearance, right? Like, you need a muscular guy, it's Goliath. No, we needed someone with heart. And Jesus had, um, Dave, uh, David had God in his heart. And he knew if he's got God in his heart, you got everything. You got all the strength uh, to get any victory over any giant in your life today. You know, um, Jesus had uh, a big heart. And he overcame death because of God. David David um, defeated Goliath because he had God in his heart. And that's what this scripture was. But we're going to bounce on over here to um, uh, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 17, um, verse uh, 42. And it goes like this. And when the Philistines looked at him and saw David, he disdained him. For he was only a youth, ruddy and good looking. So he's like looking at this little runt of a guy, you know, hey, handsome little shepherd boy, you know, he's kind of jacked up maybe, right? Ruddy, I don't know what ruddy means, but um, maybe we can look that word up. But let me see if there's a study note here on uh, verse 42. It says, David lacked the signs of age and the scars that one would expect of a battle season champion, right? So, little shepherd boy, what is he even doing there? What am I doing here? Right? You see what I'm saying, right? Unlike most soldiers of Israel, they had scars, battle scars, you know, from being in wars and being in battles, fights and this and that. They got the score, the battle scars to prove how tough they are. But David didn't need any of that. He didn't need a big stature, a big physical body, um, muscles and abs and, you know, anything. Even a shield or a sword. He walked up with a little slingshot with a stone that he picked out of the river. If you go and read, um, I want you to go and read chapter uh, 17, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 41 through 50. He picked five stones, as uh, scripture uh, verse 40 says. And the five were, I thought maybe he brought extra in case he'd miss, right? But no, he brought five because... Goliath had four other four other brothers, giants, troublemakers, demon possessed people, right? And uh, that's what it's all about, guys. David lacked the physical signs, as we saw here in, in the previous in sixteen um, verse seven of First Samuel. And it didn't matter. It doesn't matter what this looks like on the outside. It matters what you got inside. Love for God, you know. Invite Him into your heart, man, you know. And I went from being worthless to priceless now because I had the Lord living in me. Hallelujah. All right, guys, we're going to get on a great lesson here, man. God can use anybody. When I meet new people, though, and, and the thing is we always want to look a certain way or act a certain way. We don't need to do that to impress people. We just need to be us and be who God made you to be. When I, met new, when I meet new people, um, Geo Pickle from North Dakota, USA, sent into the upper room here. <clears throat> when I meet new people, um, they, are, they are really impressed when I tell them that I work as a cleaning lady in a nursing home. <laughs> like, what? Right? But here I am. I'm doing the Lord's work. People are like, okay, and what? I'm a, I'm a big businessman. I sell computers. I work on cars. I'm an electrician. It, they very rarely ever impress with me, man, that's for sure. But again, no prestige is necessary. I don't need accolades and, and I don't need to be anything big in this life to be big because God in me is bigger than all. Evidently, right, it says here about him working in the nur uh, cleaning. Uh, uh, I work as a cleaning lady in a nursing home, good sister says. Evidently, making beds and mopping floors does not sound like an exciting mission field for Christ. Nevertheless, manual labor is what God has called me to do. These videos is what God has called me to do. Over the years, I've come to understand three important things. My workplace is filled with lonely people. Lonely people love talking to the janitor. And proclaiming the power of Christ does not require an elevated platform. We don't need to be up here. you know. We don't need any to be anything special in life to do God's work. And, and we can be anywhere there's lonely, heartbroke people everywhere, and God will give them, the hopelessness are everywhere, and we will give them hope. In 1 Samuel, we learned that David was a shepherd because David's job wasn't prestigious, and he was a young and inexperienced. Goliath had nothing but disdain for him, laughing at him, mocking him. However, once the battle, once on the battlefield, the young man who loved his lambs was able to knock out the giant with one single, um, one sing, one, with one single stone. Well aimed at his forehead, praise the Lord. David's, David's story teaches us no matter who we are and what we do, we should not discard the importance of God's calling for us. Whatever you, whatever you're doing, you know, whatever you think that, you know, what you're doing in life right now is where you're supposed to be. And God will use you 
right there. Only God can measure our worth, guys. Remember that. Focus on God and what He thinks and nobody else. Peace be with you. See you next time. Hallelujah.